right now we're going to focus on understanding linear and nonlinear functions from a table. So, when looking at a table, what we want to do is focus on the rate of change. So we want to focus on the change in the output values over the change in the input values. And that rate of change is similarly related to the slope in a linear relationship. So I'm looking at this table, and I want to know if it represents a linear function. First thing I'm going to go ahead and do is take a look at the change in the output values. So I have from 12 to 18, it's a change of 6. And it seems to be a change, a constant change of 6 in my output values. And then my input values seem to have a constant change of 2. So I can see that the change in output values over the change in the input values is always 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So because that has a constant rate of change, I can see that it's a linear function. If we look at this next example, however, you might look at these values and think, well, wait a minute. It kind of looks like these numbers change at different rates. Well, from 18 to 12, we have negative 6. From 12 to 0, we have negative 12. From 0 to negative 18, we have a change of negative 18. And from 18 to negative 24, you have a change of negative 6. However, from 1 to 2, you have a change of positive 1. 2 to 4, you have a change of positive 2. 4 to 7 is a change in positive 3. And 7 to 8 is a change in positive 1. But again, remember what you want to focus on for the rate of change is the output divided by the input. So when I focus on those numbers, negative 6 divided by positive 1, negative 12 divided by a positive 2, negative 18 divided by a positive 3, negative 6 divided by a negative 1, or a positive 1, they are all the same value. Even though these num the rate from one number to the next changes, the relationship between the output and the input always remains at negative 6. Let's take a look at this next example. So my output values here change from 1 to 4 is a positive 3. This is a positive 12, positive 33, and positive 15. So I don't know if this is going to be a linear relationship or not. Let me go ahead and check the top. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 1. Kind of had that same change as the first one. However, when we take the output divided by the input, here I get 3. Here my rate of change is 6. So already that's enough to tell me that this is a nonlinear relationship. And I can confirm that 33 divided by 3 and 15 divided by 1. I have different rates of change. So I can see that this is definitely nonlinear. That's all right. It could be something even cooler. Now, you can identify a linear function from a graph. And really, it's a fairly straightforward operation. Does the graph make a line? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, and it doesn't matter which direction that line goes, as long as it's a line, it represents a linear function.
if it does not represent a line, as you can see here, there's curvature, then it is a nonlinear function. And that's the easiest way to identify a linear function from a graph. The eyeball test is often the quickest one. So now let's take a look at this example. I want to tell whether the equation y equals negative 2x plus 3 can represent the following function. So here I have a table. And I want to see essentially if this table relates to this linear function. I know this is a line, so I know this is my slope, negative 2, which also we've established as a rate of change. And I know that this is my y-intercept. Whoops. Having technical difficulties here. Okay. Well, first, let's go ahead and focus on my rate of change. So from negative 1 to negative 3, I have a change of negative 2. From negative 3 to positive 5, that's a pretty big shift of positive 8. From 2 to 3, I have a change of positive 1. From 3 to negative 1, however, I have a change of negative 4. So if I look at my rate of change from negative 2 over negative over positive 1, is that the same thing as positive 8 over negative 4? Yeah, it is. So I know at the very least that this table represents a rate of change of negative 2, which is, not coincidentally, my slope. But the next thing I need to do is figure out how to represent my y-intercept. Well, if you remember, the y-intercept is represented by the spot where the line crosses the y-axis, which is right there. So that means my x value is going to be 0. If I plug in 0 for x, then I'm going to get y equals 3. And what we can see, that 3 is represented over here as my y-intercept. So the numbers match up, and ultimately I can say, without shadow of a doubt, that yes, this equation represents the, the table in, as a function. And that's all.